All right, so our next group is 27, is group 27. This has an interesting, um, uh, I want to say cast of characters, but it has a, um, some interesting folks. And I've actually seen them on several panels too. Um, so we have Meredith Chaikin Weiss, we have Matthew Isaac Destry, and Frank David Letty. I have experience with one of those judges. Um, so okay, so wait a minute. My experience have, first, and then you tell me who you're going with. I have Destry, and I have um, Lede, and who's the, there's a third person? There's a third person. Her name, um, she didn't do her thing. Um, Meredith Weiss Chaikin. I saw her on a panel, and she was on her phone the whole time. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not sure if she's in the, um, if she's in that race. I only see the two. Uh, it's three of them in that race. She's in that race. She okay, but I don't have any. Yeah, don't we, don't have, we don't have um, we don't have information on her because she yeah. shows up sometimes, you know. And I don't know. Sometimes for some people it might be strategy, but she's she's in that race, and I've seen her on panels. And like I said, the one one of the times that I saw her, she you know they had the video on everybody, and she was she was on her phone. So that's that's all I'm gonna say. Okay. So well, I, can, I can't let's, say let's, anything about her. We don't have information, and I don't want to make, you know, I don't want to say nothing about her that I don't know, but I just, I did know that I saw her in a panel, and she just, you know, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Let's, so let me, let's, let me, let me let's do a Destry and Letty. I, I've had experience with, with Frank Lede. He's a former um, prosecutor down in Miami-Dade, Dade. Dade. Mm -hmm. and you probably will never hear me advocate for a from, former prosecutor for almost anything. But this guy is something else. He's, he's a different kind of a person. Forget about the label of a prosecutor or a public defender. He's just a different sort of person. I, I had a case in, um, where he was the supervisor in the criminal division. It was a pretty serious case. It was one of the gang unit cases. Um, and uh, my client was a young black kid. He was 18 years old. Um, and he was looking at 13 felony counts, 13 third degree felony counts. So he was looking at six, up to 65 years in prison, um, you know, a whole bunch of fines and everything like that. I think he scored like something like 13 years at the bottom of, the, of his state sentencing guidelines, which means that if he was convicted, the judge would have to sentence him to 13 years unless the judge found some reason not to sentence him to 13 years. So um, the division prosecutor, uh, was honest with me and frank with me he told me there's nothing he could do about it um, um, other than a conviction in prison and if I wanted to do anything better I needed to talk to his supervisor Frank Lede, which I did um, I talked to Frank I, I or Mr. Lede, I told him that listen this is my client's first offense ever um, this was an attractive nuisance sort of thing that was set up by the police department to um, and he, and he he decided to take it upon himself to do something that I don't want to get too much into the details of the case, but he decided to do something that was entrepreneurial. Okay. And it has nothing to do with us, let me say that. But okay. he decided to do something that was sort of entrepreneurial and he got caught up in it. So um, to my surprise, the day asked to meet my client's parents, which I was I was very shocked. I was like, you want to meet his parents? He was like, yeah. He said, you said that he worked, his family is very hard working, his parents are very hard working, I want to meet him. So I brought in his mother and his father. They sat down, they spoke, he listened to them, he talked to them, he wanted to know why this happened. You know, he, he was very, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to describe it, but you know, it was, it was very nice to see that, that he sat down, he actually listened to what they had to say, then he asked if he could speak to the client, he spoke to the client, and then the, 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 the end of it all was, he formulated a plan that would result in this particular client not being adjudicated, which means that he would not be a convicted felon, he would not lose his voting rights, and he was going to be placed on probation, he was going to be placed on supervision, there were certain other things he needed to do, mm -hmm. but he was out of the prison system. Right. Um, and, 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 Ms., and, and Mr. Lede wanted to see how he progressed, and of course this young man ended up finishing school, ended up going and taking some um, 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 community college courses, and better himself. Now he works two jobs, he has a family of his own. So it really paid off for him because frankly, they saw something in him or he, he had the patience to at least listen and then give them a second opportunity. So I, 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 I've never met Frank Lede since he became a judge in Broward County. And that's just the way that I am because even my, um, one of my former office mates is judge now and I never go and visit him because I never want to give the, the, the appearance of impropriety. Right. So I don't go into these folks, but I know Frank Lede and I, and I, and I have experience with him. And um, that's why I voted for him. Um, 
And uh, that's, that's well, and, and, that, and that's and that's a great thing because that's one of the things that I think is important, right? Because and, and sometimes when these judges hand it out hand out these sentences, it's basically like they just threw that person's life away. They determined that that person's life didn't have any value, right? Because if you send us an eighteen year old to eighty years or fifty years or thirty years or something, you're basically saying that there's no value in this child's life. So it's uh, it's amazing and awesome to hear that he at least took the opportunity to get to know this kid because people do make mistakes and they do some stuff that you know it was a, it wasn't a right thing to do at that time but does that mean that like the rest of my life gotta go to the garbage because of one decision that i made on that particular day so it's wonderful to hear that someone's willing to do that and you know and, and that's another thing that's happening with part of the criminal justice reform is that they want to find alternative to sentencing right because sending people to prison is can't always be the answer that that, that can't be the only option when someone does something that's not the right thing at that particular moment. So it's, it's um, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of a movement to kind of do differently in terms of sentencing. So I also have an experience with um, Judge Lede, and mine was in family court. And again, I, I practice mainly immigration law. When I'm going into family court or even criminal court, there's usually some immigration component to it. And I had a client that was um, getting a divorce. And my client... I told him, come with an interpreter because you don't speak enough English for us to do this hearing, right? And the great thing was that uh, Judge Lede, um, the great thing was that Judge Lede, he speaks Creole, he speaks French, and he can, um, you know, and he can get it to sound close enough to Creole. So we were able to do the hearing because he's also multilingual, right? So he speaks a lot of um, different languages. He was actually very patient with my client because I, I had a hearing with another judge. My client came in with no interpreter. They wouldn't let me interpret for them. And we ended up having to reset the hearing. So it was good that he was able to do that. And then I also told him that I was fluent in Haitian Creole too. And he allowed me to ask some of the questions and then you know he was able to also swear him in and everything like that so and I think that's needed because you know uh, a lot of the things that happen in the courtroom like if you need an interpreter you can usually always get a Spanish-speaking interpreter that works with the courthouse and it's rare that you can get an interpreter that works at the courthouse that's Creole speaking even though there's a significant population of Broward County that's Creole speaking people. So I have to say that I would give him kudos just for him being able to do that. And he's adding just that language um, to the bench, right? Like to me, that, that, that's um, great in and of itself. And he also has a very like multicultural background in itself. I believe he was born in Puerto Rico, but he grew up in St. Bart's, like his family um, was one of the founding families of St. Bart's. So he has, um, he has like that whole Caribbean vibe that's important. And I think that kind of adds so you know people's like energy and perspective and how they how they do things so i i too had like a good experience um when i appeared in front of his courtroom and he will definitely um be getting my vote um so but there's another person in that race there's two others we said what we're gonna say about um the other one and um matthew destry um what if anything do you want to um say about him because i only know one thing about him okay so uh i would definitely um, not vote for Destry um, by any stretch. So as, as we've said about, we talked about Judge um, Lede giving folks second chances and having the patience to listen to people and not not just flying off the handle and giving um, sentencing people to the to what amounts to the rest of their life in in um, in jail. Um, now on the other spectrum, we have of someone like Destry, who when he was a judge had someone who violated their probation by, I believe, getting like a driving while license suspended or something ridiculous like that. Right. And then he went and sentenced that person. And, and this is just all about my memory, so you have to correct me if I'm wrong, but he, I think he tried, to, he tried to give the person like a 60-year sentence or something. Yes, that that's what I know about him. Yeah, he tried to sentence him to 60 years. This was a young black kid. And, um, and I'm not saying that this young black kid was an angel um, he, he was on probation, I believe, for, for a violent offense. Um, but 60 years for what amounts to a violation of probation with a violation of probation with driving on a suspended license is utterly ridiculous. Yeah. And, and that's throwing and, someone's life away. That's that, like, you have no value. That's literally saying that your life has no value when you send someone to 60, sentence someone to 60 years. Now, this, this, this has here about whether or not he was, um, um, he suffered any consequences for that, because I seem to remember yeah. some sort of investigation. 
Yeah, yeah. So what ended up happening was that 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 um incident caused a lot of community uproar. Like people were just like, "Are you kidding me?" It was in the papers. I mean, like people were like upset about it. And apparently, this is where he explains it. Um, um, Judge um Destry, because he used to be a judge before, and then I think he resigned, um, or something like that. And then now he's running for he's running again. So apparently, he had a conversation with some community members about this particular case. And there was a complaint about ex parte communication and they brought the case up to the GNC. But I think it didn't go anywhere because he resigned before there was a decision on that um, complaint that was filed for him talking to somebody, these outside of the- You're doing your, that you're working somewhere and someone brings up the fact that you have a conflict of interest where you work and you're about to be investigated. And before you're investigated, you resign, which stops the investigation, and then you're able to run again for that very same position. No, no, brother. It was something like that. Yeah, that's, I think that's the timeline, right? So, yeah, that's what happened. I believe he did because the investigation ended up getting halted, you know, um, and then because he resigned and because people were just like, dude, what you doing? And then, you know, he kind of, and then it was, it was a couple years ago, so he let some time pass. Hopefully people will forget. But you know, we're in a world of like Google and the internet right now. So it's kind of hard to forget stuff because somebody just gonna put your name in there, all your business coming out, right? So yeah, so it was some of that. So I think he, he did, uh, I believe he did resign and then now he's um, running again. So he's a no, right? Yeah, Frank LeVay is the man. <laughs> that's, that, I mean, that, that, that one there is easy. That's, that's, that's an easy one. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I also had a, a good experience with him too. And I know that's some people that knew the Staples, the Staples easy button right there. Say what? That's the Staples easy button. That's the Staples easy button, right? No, 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 no. If that bust about it, we're good. Yeah, particularly, yeah. So, okay.